Good evening. Welcome to the QCIS channel. Well, on this channel, you get a daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. My name is Leon Jones, and tonight we'll talk about the construction industry and basically what is construction and what are the different industries or sub-disciplines in construction. Well, as you know, construction is a large field. Uh, construction, they, they do everything from bridges to buildings. You know, you can even talk about other structures like airplanes. You can say they build substations. Everywhere you have a need for infrastructure, heck, building, refrigerators. Now, most of us talk about construction as if it were something from the civil engineering background. You know, you're in dirt, you're in water. That's true but you can build cabinets, you can do innovation, you can actually build machines, that's construction as well. But we're gonna lighten the load a bit and we're gonna actually get more into civil and architectural construction. Now, we'll go ahead and bring up the PowerPoint Let's get into it. All right, again, this is from one of my Old Dominion classes. And if you get a chance and you're going to Old Dominion, whether you're online or whether you are on campus, take CET 440 construction documents, Dr. Muhammad Shah, very very knowledgeable professor. I believe he works as a project manager for the city of Newport News. I am using his presentation because he understands the field of construction. Now, some things with a few of his PowerPoints that I have to look at there tends to be some misspelled words. So before I present any of his PowerPoint slides, I'll make the corrections myself. But again, it's very important that you understand contract documents. That's the name of the class. But we're going to get into construction industry. Now, in the construction industry, what do we do? Well, there's deforestation, there's mining, which minor mining, you don't see too much of that around anymore. Maybe some strip mining, but that plays a role in reshaping land. You have agriculture. Agriculture, we deal with a lot of farming. Uh, we basically clear a significant amount of land. So overall, with construction, we are reshaping the Earth's surface. Now, most of the time when we talk about construction, we deal with static structures. Now, when I'm talking about something being static, it means it doesn't move. That's why when you take a statics course, particularly in mechanical engineering and civil engineering, your forces, your moments, when everything equals zero, the equation is right. Why? Because it's stationary. It doesn't move. It's not dynamic. When something is dynamic, where you include centrifugal acceleration, that's known as dynamics, it's moving. So when we deal with structures that are immobile, we're talking about bridges, 
jetties, docks, railroads, airports, power plants, dams, canals, tunnels, houses, and of course, buildings. And also you see an example right here. This is a tunnel. This is a building. This is a railroad. These structures don't move because if they did move, there could be casualties. And casualties will stop at the top of the food chain with losses of life. Now, when it comes to the United States market size, now, of course, these dates are a little old, but not too far off. We deal with almost two trillion, and this was the market size back in 2021. Now, it could have been a little larger than this, but what happened? We had the coronavirus, which a number of people were laid off because many of us were sidelined based on governor uh, government's orders. But at that time, we had. 1.9, or I'm going to round it up to 2 trillion people in the construction industry. Now, your AAGR, which is your average annual growth rate, projected to achieve above 3% or greater than 3%. Now, this is between 2023 and 2026. Now, your key sectors... In the construction industry, commercial, industrial, infrastructure, energy and utility, institutional, and residential. Now, what do I mean by institutional? Well, when we have institutional construction, we deal a lot with your education facilities and your prison facilities. That's what we mean by institution. When we get into housing, that's residential. Industrial, that's basically your factories, your energy, your substations, your infrastructure, that's your bridges and roads. And of course, there's also environmental out there. That's a key sector. That's when we deal with your wetlands. Because if you think about it, Environmental is going to be included in the key sectors because wherever you build, you're going to have to have permit, and I guarantee that's going to be based off of something environmental. And then there are a number of key consultants like AECOM, KCM, PSI Intertech, DLZ. Etc. Now, when we deal with the key contractors, well, we have the Turner Corporation. I believe uh, Turner Corporation, its headquarters is in Baltimore. They had roughly just over $16 billion. Then we get Bechtel. Around $12 billion. Maztec, $11.6 billion. And if you see all these numbers, this is why you should get into the construction industry. Now, construction has a lot of liability. That means if you want to be a construction company, you've got to have surety bonds because contractors and owners have to protect them sells and when it comes to construction your high expenditure is generally your labor and your equipment if you're on the contracting side now when we break everything down into workforce such as the industrial workforce at 15 percent they're involved in construction now, your construction activities include production, transportation, and distribution. Now, what you have here, we'll talk about the industrial workforce. You're actually building a warehouse facility 
where here they're going to be producing chocolate. So within that facility, you need an area that you can produce the chocolate. Then you're going to have to utilize equipment to transport the chocolate, such as your trucks, and where you're going to distribute the chocolate. Because you're going to have to take it to facilities, like stores and everything. Now, as I move on here, just bear with me. We're going to go to our next slide here. Now, again, there are different types of construction. Now, generally, let's put this in perspective. Generally, we deal with new construction. But if your economy is really bad, then we're going to go into renovation and remodeling. And you can call it construction, but after you actually build a piece of infrastructure, then you got to start figuring, well, now we have it built. How much money are we going to have to a lot for repairs and maintenance? Now, what you have here, you have little townhouses here. This is your new construction. Right here with the paint, that's an example of maintenance and repair. And you have this office building before and after. This is your renovation and remodeling. Break it down again. When we talk about relative distribution of construction expenditures by type of construction. As you see, looking at this 3D pie graph here, everything's broken down into new construction, maintenance, and repair renovation and modeling. If, if you look at this pie graph, let's say almost 76%. I'm going to I'm going to actually say it's right around 75% or 64%, 64%. Almost 65%. That's your new construction. 23.9%, that's your renovation and modeling. And 11.4%, that's your maintenance and repair. You can see from the graph, new construction is what you want to shoot for. Because when you have new construction, you're going to have other players, like your engineers and architects. Because design is involved. When it comes to renovation and re remodeling, certainly you're also going to have some engineers involved, but not like new construction. It's basically when you're utilizing renovation now, you could renovate something and modernize a building. That's where you're going to have all your engineers. Now, maintenance and repair, you could have maintenance engineers as well. And when it comes to maintenance, particularly on the industrial side, they're going to use statistics. They're going to come up with how they can repair a building with minimal waste, little optimization. Okay. The expenditures of maintenance and repair are basically consistent from year to year. Trade-offs are often between new construction and those for renovation and remodeling. Now, this is what I said before. When the economy is strong, expenditure is higher. When the economy is weak, then we go back to renovation and remodeling. Why? Because we have a shortage of funds. This is why when we deal in the construction industry, we make more money when there's new construction. Now, total expenditures for new construction will decline 
when we have a bad economy. Now, the construction industry, we have what you call cost, uh, custom built projects. Now, basically, when we deal with anything that's custom built, there's a lot of prefabrication, which the standardization is very limited. However, you do have some complex and unique projects. And when it comes to personnel, it may change from project to project, and there's a variety of efforts. And when it comes to contractors, there is a big role for specialty contractors. Now, when I talk about specialty contractors, these are ones who are HVAC or electricians or your, your masons or your uh, let's say the the individuals that install windows because when it comes to a building the GC can only handle a certain amount of the building process because the GC which is a general contractor has to manage the project as well and manage the subs now manufacturing as you know we can call that construction because they build cars. And when we deal with manufacturing, we're talking about mass production and the methods are standardized. Workers do repetitive tasks. That means they retain the same role. Now, because you are basically utilizing standardized methods and repetitive methods as well, the quality control is much easier in manufacturing than it is in construction. And there is a less role for specialty contractors. Now, the role of specialty contractors, 80 to 90%, they're in building constructions. Feed development. Now, what do I mean by feed development? Vertical development. Vertical development is building construction. Now you have 15% of heavy constructions. H development. What do I mean by H development? That's horizontal development. That means you are basically working with civil infrastructure, roads, bridges. Most of these contractors are working for a DPW, a DOT, Federal Highway Administration, wherever there is transportation infrastructure. Now, these numbers might be off, but not too far off. Average wage of skilled construction workers in the U.S. 2021, 1587 per hour, and it jumped up to $19 per hour which is a 20% increase, and then $24.29 per hour, that's a 28% increase. Now, just like construction inspection, one thing you must understand about construction is it's seasonal. So it is common for employment to fall by more than 25% from peak to low construction months. Higher fall is in the heavy highway construction projects. And when it comes to construction, workers may relocate to the next project site. Now, that is true. If you're working on a DOT project, you're basically working from March to November. Now, when it comes to a commercial building, you can work all year round. And if you're lucky, particularly if you're an inspector, you're going to be the guy that's inspecting the building and testing the construction materials for building construction. When it comes to the winter time for heavy highway, for the most part, if you are working for a contractor, you're gonna be laid off. Months of high employment, June and November, months of low employment, January to March. General concept. For a project to start in the spring months and be sufficiently completed by fall months, 
so that the remaining indoor activities, we call finishing, can be performed during the colder months. Now, the economy and the construction industry. Strong economy measures housing starts, more hiring, more employment, more issued building permits, more expenditures in the private sectors. Weak economy measures unemployment, more renovation and remodeling, more of public projects and less of private projects. Let's take a look at this graph as it right here. This is monies and trillions, and this is years. If you look at it, zero, everything is stagnant. When you're below zero, this means that everything is tanking. Now, when you look at your assets, your assets are generally lower than your liabilities. That means you have an issue right there. Now, this is basically at the end of a quarter. This is one thing you have to understand when you're dealing in construction. You need to know construction accounting because you have to maintain your books accurately at all times. Now, again, the construction industry, one in every eight businesses start in the construction industry. Why? Because it's an easy entry and it's also an easy exit industry. High growth rate responds quickly to economic shifts, low capital requirements. Employees are the big asset rather than of equipment and materials. Most states have no rigid licensing requirements and fees. So if you are in construction and you have a set of skills that are needed for the market, you can establish your own company. Now, factors causing failure to construction firms, overextension of resources, subcontractor defaults, inadequate insurances, error in estimation and performance, lack of experience or expertise, death or departure of key employees, acts of God, and inadequate labor. Construction contractors are resource managers. Now the resources, again, money and time, equipment, labor, and material. Now the most important resource in construction is labor. Why? Because it causes fluctuation in anticipated costs. Now, more controllable resources are material, equipment, money, and time. Profit margin decreases during recessionary periods. So you have more bidders and less advertisements. 2008 should ring a bell. Distribution of construction firms. Now you have 10% proprietorship, you have 11% partnership, 79% proportion of a corporation. Let's go to the Venn diagram. If you look at everything, corporations, partnerships, and sole proprietorships, they're all business organizations. And looking at this Venn diagram, they all tie into each other. Again, you have a 10% proprietorship, 11% partnership, and 79% corporation. Private and public construction. Now, when we deal with your public projects, this is when you work for a DPW, Department of Public Works. That's where most of your highways and bridges are where your sewers are, your public buildings. Now, your private projects, where your subdivisions, your railroads and utilities are, you have private buildings. Also, if you're an owner, owners must ascertain the ability of land, sufficient fund for design and construction. Again, owners must ascertain availability of land. Also, they must have sufficient funding for design and construction. So here's how everything works. Distribution of funds by the type of owners. You have an equivalent to 3% federal, an equivalent to 30% state and local, equivalent to 
67% private. Now, private breaks down to 27% residential, 40% non-residential, which that's industrial and commercial. Also, construction plan. When you are planning, you have funds. So what you have to do is fund to obtain land in the form of donation, purchasing, and condemnation, also known as eminent domain. You have to prepare plans. And with the plans, you have to have a feasibility study and a design. Then once everything is finished with the design, then you perform the construction and you have the maintenance. And then one thing you need to know as well, you have to obtain regulatory permits. And that's going to be within your locality, state, and of course, federal. Also, design. Design must be completed before bidding. So within that design, you have to look at your right of way and your easements. Your permits. Permits are going to be building codes and they're going to be environmental, like your NPDES permits. Then your construction. Within construction, there's going to be the bid first, then the award to the lowest bidder, then construction. That's how it works. Very simple. Sources of private project funds. That's the expenditure of existing capitals. There's also direct loans of outside creditors. Your assets, they're going to be fixed. So we have sales of fixed assets. We have issuance of additional shares of stocks. Issuance of corporate bonds. And we have endowments. Sources of public project funds. Appropriation from annual operation budget. That includes general taxation for your small projects. Now, some of your road projects, a lot of the gas taxes are used. So there are special tax assessments of bonds for large projects. Also, there are special grants, bonds, form, state, federal for some projects, EIB bonds, SLAF, ARPA, CFPF, and there are also endowments for public project funds. Now, the distribution of public projects. Well, for your smaller scale, you're going to have residential. For your bigger scale, you're going to have your buildings, and under your buildings, schools, hospitals, fire stations, courthouses, and community centers. Now, when you break everything down, this is how the private construction funds are allocated. So at the top, 48% for new single family homes, 18% for improvements, 8% for commercial, 5% for new multifamily homes, 4% for offices, 3% for manufacturing, 3% for power, and of course, 3% for healthcare. Allocation of public construction funds. Again, if you work for DPW or DOT, most of that is going to go to your education. But under your education, which education has 30%, 28% go to highway and street, 9% go to transportation, sewer and waste disposal, 6% go to water supply, 4% go to power, of course, 3% go to recreation, public safety, healthcare, residential, and of course, other. Now, in our construction categories, we have housing, 35%, or we call it residential. Non-residential building commercial has 25%. Your industrial, 25%, that's productions. And for your engineering, or we call it your civil, that's your heavy highway at 15%. Housing residential, residential units are single family detached, attached and low and high rise apartment buildings. This is a subdivision right here at the bottom. Then 
when you are building subdivisions or housing, you know your economy is stable. Why? Because housing is the major economic stabilizer of the U.S. economy. And when you're building a lot of houses, that means the economy is responding strongly and quickly to the national monetary policy. Non-commercial or non-residential buildings, it's commercial, recreational, private and public, farms, religious, which we talk about churches, social and institutional at 25%. Industrial, 25%. Productions undertaken by large specialization firms, paper mills, petroleum refineries, power, chemical plants, and of course, steel mills. Then we get into engineering, heavy highway, 15% non-architectural structures. This is a large amounts of rock, earth, steel, asphalt, concrete, timber, or piping. These are all known as civil works projects. Now, when we talk about construction employers, approximately 2 million of them are self-employed firms, most of them with no employees, no payroll, which we call those sole proprietorships. And also, you have to understand when you're dealing with a sole proprietorship, some employers misclassify their employees as independent contractors. Why? so they can avoid paying Social Security, Medicare, and other taxes. Now, 80% of the firms employed less than 10 employees. They employed 24% of all construction workers. That's amazing. This is the truth why small business is really, in my humble opinion, they actually provide most of the jobs. And then we get into the bigger firms, only 2%. 2% of the firms employ greater than 100 employees. And they employ 21% of all construction workers. Again, these two right here, self-employment and small construction firms, contractors. Imply, uh, employ not many employees. This is why you can do home inspection. This is why you can have a tree clearing service. Contru construction is very, very flexible. Most people don't know it. Most people think everybody is out there building a building. You have some that are specialty uh, contractors. They're doing piping, trenching. That's all they're doing. And they're making good money. In fact, in the wintertime, no matter if it's a DOT job, which is a heavy highway job, you can still do trenching and piping and placing utilities all year round. Now, the only problem that you're going to have, depending on where you are in the wintertime, you have to deal with the cold weather. And when you have freeze thaw, that's really not good to do construction. This is just too cold. Also, the construction workforce, the availability of workers. This year, it was a shortage. Generally, you do have shortages because you have some people that want to work, some people that don't want to work. You have union and non-union. So basically, you're going to have a shortage depending on what type of outfit you have. Be shortage of carpenters, bricklayers, welders, the big one, 10% racial minorities. Why in construction, as a minority, you can get an MBE, a DBE, a WBE, and even a veteran business enterprise certification because the government, they want to encourage minorities to compete for some of this work. So when you are a 
let's say a DBE, a WBE, an MBE, or VBE, you get 10 to 20 percent based on a contract and the general contractor has to meet the DBE goal. And you have women workers. They're only 10% of construction workers. And you have 74% managerial or support staff positions. And that's where a number of women fill. You have 30% of your Hispanic workers. EMB paving has a number of Hispanic workers. I worked with them on a job in Frankfurt. And also project development. Under project development, there's always a concept plan. And that's where you explore funding and your obtaining of land or location. And you have cost, zoning restriction, and permitting. And you have your investment analysis. Then you go for your design plans. That's where you have your role of a design firm, whether you're an architect or an engineer. And you can be retained for construction administration. And there's also bidding and selecting a contractor. And then there is your construction. And what you have heard was an overview of the construction industry and what's involved in the construction industry. It is a very flexible field. You can go anywhere. Some do design. Some manage projects. Some actually build the projects. Some do quality control. You name it. If you have the capital and you know how to bid, you know how to manage your schedules and your budgets, you're going to be successful in the construction business. But let me tell you, just like any other business, you don't run it right, you're going to fail. There are liabilities within construction, so you have to make sure you get the right insurance, like your general liability. If you're a design firm, you get your e and Insurance is paramount. You cannot go on any construction project without insurance. Make sure that a number of your employees have at least an OSHA 10. Supervisors need OSHA 30. In construction, you have to make sure you understand the environmental regulatory requirements. Codes. That's also, you may have some areas in construction where individuals are inspecting projects. They're not building, but when you're inspecting a project, you need to know how to review plans. You need to understand how to calculate quantity, just like an estimator. Plans reading is very paramount if you're going to be in the construction industry. You need to understand specifications. There are the CSI specifications. It used to be 16 divisions. Now they're 50. And on DOT jobs, you have what we call the uh, your standards and your specifications. Now, your standards are basically specifications that are used for every project in your state. And your specifications are basically project-specific. They are actually your state standards, but you don't use every standard for a project. For instance, if I'm working on a job that's going to require HMA, which is hot mixed asphalt, I have my standards, and there's concrete standards, there's asphalt standards. Am I going to use a statewide concrete standard on a project that involves just asphalt? No. One must understand when you're dealing with construction, your standards are basically state or nationwide. They're not relative to any project. 
their overall standards that you use for every every type of project that's going to be built in that state, but they're not project specific. You need to understand traffic control, estimating, uh, the roles of a superintendent, GC. You need to understand the roles of an inspector. You need to have some math skills. And of course, you need to understand safety. But those are some of the areas in the construction industry. And what I've given you tonight was an overview of what is in the construction industry. So that concludes this topic on the construction industry. If you like what I just presented, please comment, share, and subscribe. And if you're looking for some political content and some scam content, check out my main channel, the 411 Talk Zone radio show channel on YouTube. Now, here's what I do. For the 401 Talk Zone radio show channel, so I finish all my videos, I will post the videos from the 401 Talk Zone radio show channel onto my X page, formerly Twitter. Now I'm using Rumble and also True Social. Now for the QCIS channel, I do the same thing. I pre-record all my videos for the QCIS channel, and then I post them on X, formerly Twitter, and also I utilize a professional site called LinkedIn. Now you have all the information where you need to find my videos on two channels, or one Talk Zone Radio Show channel, and a QCIS channel. Schedule generally the 401 Talk Zone radio show videos are done on Wednesdays and on Thursdays. I actually do content on the QCIS channel. That is the QCIS channel. And once again, thank you for viewing this content from the QCIS channel. Well, on this channel, you get a daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. Till next time, my name is Leon Jones. I want you all to have a wonderful and gracious evening.